gets up high and beat the drum to what we love Risk the fall or we have felt it all come crashing down from far above Stars are rising, countless worlds colliding, only one will take it all Can we bring to fall the giants? Can we make the final call? Hello everybody and welcome back to the second game of the day for the Meta High School Esports Championship. We have uh, two more teams up against each other. On the blue side we have Blakehurst High School and Parramatta High School. Uh, I'm of course Replays and uh, I've been joined by a different play-by-play -play for this first game, uh, Mr... Formal. How are you going today, Max? Yeah, you know what? I uh, just got back from a different cast, and now I am joining here to buy some meta going. Now, I've done meta before. I've done a lot of meta Rocket League before. I've done meta League of Legends Grand Finals before, but I've never done regular season from meta before. So a new experience. I'm excited to get into this, and there's already some familiar faces, so I think I'm going to be able to integrate quite well. Yeah, precisely. I believe Blakehurst High School were uh, quite a strong team in the meta competition last year, making it uh, all the way to the finals, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, maybe even taking out uh, the high school championship. Very strong players across the board, just on paper for their side. As, uh, as we get into this draft, we're seeing these uh, champions being taken out one by one. Very uh, interesting champions, but obviously targeting one tricks uh, or uh, high elo players in particular. Yeah, absolutely. Blakehurst last year, they did make it to that grand final. They went the distance in the grand final, but then they did come up short. Uh, Slogdog was on that team. Uh, he was, I still believe, top laner then as he is right now. He's definitely going to be my player to watch in this one because he actually was one of the deciding factors that would kind of kept Blakehurst competitive and what I considered at the time to be a very unfavorable matchup for them. Uh, for this game today, I'm expecting high things from Blakehurst and I'm expecting Parramatta maybe to struggle a little bit, but at the same time, you know, I do love my large Zinger boxes. They're quite tasty, quite delicious, and sometimes <laughs> they do surprise me. So I'm hoping Paramatic can bring some of those surprises. Maybe we'll see some spicy picks down there in the bot lane, something like uh, a Syndra or, uh, I mean, Yasuo is gone, but maybe we could see like an Orn Sion lane or something ridiculous like that to come out and try and combat, you know, what is probably the other strongest lane uh, when you're talking about Blakehurst lot lineup, the bot lane here, Xenon and Gone Rogue, uh, you know, two quite high elo players and together are going to be quite a powerful duo. But Camille, the first lock-in for Slogger, one of the strongest uh, solo carry kind of champions. I remember when she first came out all the way back in season six, she was domineering and she was pretty much 100% pick ban, unable to do anything against her. And so they will be piloting this one uh, and trying to carry his team to victory. 
Yeah, absolutely. When you're one of the best players in the country, uh, let alone in this tournament, why not go for that dueling potential? Although I do like this Maokai hover and pick for Parramatta. I, I, they're definitely going to be playing through a weaker top lane in this one. And Maokai, again, one of the best weak side top laners in the game right now. In fact, sometimes they can even turn it into a winning lane, as we saw with our previous game just before here at Meta HSC. So I do like this pick in reaction to the Camille. I still think Niners and Nico is probably going to struggle a bit but they have that right mentality now i just want to see strong bot side strong jungle focus coming from Parramatta, and maybe they can compete in this one yeah i mean i think the biggest area for Parramatta is going to be attack uh blakehurst through this mid to v2 they're two you know weakest uh, ranked wise players are this jungler and Vilena Caron and Smite Yogas uh, for, you know, the blue side here. So if you can get a really strong 2v2, Trundle's a good start. So that Trundle obviously one of the strongest junglers at the moment. You power that, pair that with a powerful mid lane duo that are really going to attack uh, whatever Caron offs to go for in the mid lane. Could just demolish them at the moment and just win very hard through that 2v2. We saw last game, the mid lane was one of the biggest, the mid jungle duo was the biggest difference in that game. And you know, maybe it could be the deciding win factor again for Paramount to maybe upset the favorites here, Blake Hurst coming into this match. Yeah, speaking of jungle duos, though, it does look like uh, Blakehurst might be focusing their jungle more towards the bot side of that map for the beautiful C and C combo, Condemn and Cataclysm with the Vayne and the Jarvan. Back on the Paramount side, though, I do like that Trundle pickup. He is one of the best dueling jungles out there, and he has a fast clear. Uh, I do think Trundle into Jarvan is actually still a pretty good matchup for uh, the Trundle as well. So maybe that can give some abilities for Paramatta to start to invade, start to disrupt Smite your AGS as much as possible. Uh, that's going to be required, again, if they're going to establish you know, any sort of map pressure uh, to disrupt that jungle on the opposing side. So my eyes are definitely going to be on Dinosec, how he paths, how he plays this matchup. I have high hopes for him, and hopefully he can help carry his team through this early in mid game. Yeah, exactly, man. This is a very strong 2v2. Oh, sorry, a very strong jungler, especially into that Jarvan, given the fact that the Pelican quite easily uh, cancelled the flag and drag combination from the Jarvan. But you see a lot of lockdown on Blake, her side. Jarvan Cataclysm plus Camille's ultimate means you're going to have a lot of single target lockdown. And Zyra is a fantastic counter that by the large Zinger box. Uh, going to be able to pull out the Blade Caller. And uh, if she times it precisely, could cancel one of these big lockdown abilities and get her a second of immunity to kind of uh, get away from that ability but we see these final bands Casman is a very interesting band coming in uh, given the fact that the Jarvan's locked in you generally expect a little bit more of an aggressive mid laner to be paired uh, rather than something a bit more passive like the Cassadin but Senna and Yumi two support bands that go quite well with Desire being taken away for two of the most powerful supports but there's still something up like for example the Nautilus Enli owner that could be taken into this vein and make her laning phase quite difficult yeah, I, there's still a lot of things that you can definitely throw out there to try and shut down that vein. I would like the Nautilus pick personally. I still kind of have a preference for that over the Leona just because I feel there's a bit more escapability, less all in and a bit more mobility as well at times. And those are things that I'm going to value in this sort of matchup. They seem to follow my advice and they are going to go for that Nautilus. Nautilus Zaya, a very, very dangerous duo right there. They definitely have that lockdown. So I do expect Xenon to be very cautious in lane. In fact, at this stage, I almost wouldn't mind Enchantress support. Unfortunately, that Morgana is banned away, but something like Lulu, I think, would be strong on the Blaker side. Instead, they're going to opt for that Leona, so they're going to fight fire with fire. And this bot lane, which I thought maybe could be a bit more passive, actually is going to be very aggressive. And that Twisted Fate, that's actually a very strong pick because that's going to give some of that map pressure and map control that they may have been lacking by focusing so heavily on solo lanes thus far in this draft. Yeah, precisely. And given the fact that, you know, this bot lane for uh, Blake Hurst, you know, quite a high elo combination, Gone Rogue, Diamond 4, uh, Xenon, Platinum 4 as well, uh, compared to, I believe, like the Gold 3 and Silver 2 bot lane combination uh, for the enemy side, it's going to be, uh, you know, a very, uh, obviously, aggressive side coming out from the high elo players to, you know, maybe a little bit better than their opponents. Uh, but it's going to be quite difficult to... Uh, really try and take them down and this echo is the final lock-in as a champion that's been very strong in solo queue meta uh, for a long time and gonna be taken against uh looks like slog dog there in the mid lane for the echo yeah that's very interesting actually so we are seeing some you know moving around some trickery perhaps on this blakehurst side slog dog on that tf will probably be taking that into the mid lane 
Unless, of course, we see something really crazy. I don't know. Camille support. Yeah, Jarvin mid. Leona jungle. I, I've seen crazier things in the past, but I do have to agree. I think they are going to be moving around. Uh, Twisted Fate on this Slog Dog. And that's just scary, again, in terms of the amount of map pressure and control that I think Slog Dog is going to be able to establish. Twisted Fate's wave clear does get pretty strong pretty quickly. And if Zine is forced under tower, mix that with Twisted Fate's ultimate. It's really going to put pressure on all the side lanes as well. In particular, that's more pressure on Niners and Nico, who's already going to be playing weak side that he can get dove at any moment post level 6. That's going to be more pressure on that bot side and that when they have their opportunities to try and go for kills, maybe with the help of Dinosec, they're going to have to keep Slog Dog in mind on this Twisted Fate. I really, really mm -hmm. like this pick, and I think it's going to be so almost that catalyst for Blakehurst to just control this entire map. Yeah, and what do you think? I mean, the Echo especially is a very interesting pickup by Zane. Uh, would give that a bit of side lane priority and maybe matching the twist, Twisted Fate's map pressure, uh, given the fact, especially in the early game, he's going to be out chubbing TF quite heavily. But, mm. I mean, do you think this, the skill gap is going to be quite, uh, you know, a difficult thing for the Echo to kind of combat in this matchup versus the TF? But if you can get a couple kills early on, uh, if you can maybe work around with his trundle and get a big lead and shut down Slog Dog, who is in the canon matchup, it could be quite beneficial uh, for the red side's overall chances and Parramatta's chances and taking this game out. Yeah, and actually, I love Echo Trundle as a duo in the early levels. I expect them actually to try and shove that mid lane in as fast as possible, and maybe even try a cheeky invade to try and disrupt carry on on his initial clear. Uh, if I were on this Paramount side, my goals pretty early in this game would be getting a ward on those uh, Raptors in particular, because J4's Raptor clear is actively, deceptively dangerous for him. And it's right in that mid lane, right where they can find themselves in the 2v2 fight. And that's a fight Paramatic can win because as skilled as you are, level 2, level 3, those skills don't really come into play as much. It's still really champions to sort of smashing into each other. And that can open the door to either a Dinosec snowball or maybe a Xeon snowball on this Echo. So the very beginning of this game, this first four or five minutes, is going to be so critical, especially seeing how Xeon and Dinosec work together. Yeah, precisely. It's going to be so, uh, you know, interesting to see how these dynamics of these two players work really well together and which team's going to come out on top. I mean, personally, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, quite heavily favored towards Blake Hurst just because those high elo players are just make such a game difference when you're playing against, you know, players that maybe aren't as good. But there are definitely options that uh, Parramatta have given themselves to win this game. They have quite a decent team fight and a very good uh, split push threat with the Echo and Zyde. able to clear out those waves quite effectively. So they have a decent way to stall the game out if they do fall behind and, and have very decent wave clear with the Zyre. Um, however, I think, you know, if Twisted Fate gets ahead, he's such a strong laner, uh, side laner, sorry, and able to, you know, pair it up with the Camille, going to have such a strong split push thresh threat on both those side lanes. And it's going to be so difficult uh, for Parramatta to deal with them. So it's really important they get ahead in the early game. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I am going to agree with you as well that I do believe Blakehurst is probably the favorites in this matchup, even after this picks and bans, especially because games aren't won on picks and bans. However, if I were to pick, you know, the team composition that I actually like more and I think is more suited for competitions like meta, I'm leaning towards that Paramount side. As you mentioned, it's a strong yeah. team fight. You have that front line. You have one of the best dueling junglers in the game. You have a mid laner who, if given a breath of room, can absolutely dominate everything. And you have the peel and the support required for your AD carry to take over late. Like these are usually the two team compositions that win in meta. However, mm. Blakehurst Picked a kind of team comp that, if executed correctly, can punish them quite hard. And again, I'm going back towards that mid lane. I'm going back towards Slog Dog on that Twisted Fate, especially with the teleport as well. I feel like Paramatta is going to run into issues post level six whenever they start to try and establish something at any aspect of the map. They're going to have to deal with an angry Slog Dog time and time again. So keeping this Twisted Fate under control, under the pump. That's going to be the goal for Parramatta, and I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. I hope they can make it competitive. I hope we get a back-and-forth game. I do believe that they can. It's just going to be so tough for them. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be so difficult for them to actually try and fight versus team, especially with the fact that Echo uh, has not opted for the Ignite in the mid lane because I don't think the scaling teleport rune is going to do him, oh, sorry, Summoner Spell is going to do him any favors the later it goes into this game. Sure, it's probably what you should take, but when you're relying on getting ahead in the early game to really take a game, you you might as well gamble it and risk it for the Ignite, but if you want to play something a little bit more scaling and can teleport, it was probably better to to wait around a little bit and, and maybe go for a different champion that works a bit better later in the game.
Yeah, that definitely could have been that option. And one that I agree with, I do tend to favor those late game team comps, especially in meta. And again, nine times out of 10, I'd be like, absolutely, you know, later, more better, simple, more better. But against Blakehurst, sometimes when you're against a team that maybe mechanically you don't match up to, it's almost better to go more aggressive. If only because you can get that lead, you can get that snowball and really throw them off balance. I feel like against a better mechanical team, going later, making the game go longer, just gives more chances for them to completely take it over. So on that note, I'm worried that Parramatta may have drafted themselves into a little bit of a hole in that sense. Again, they have some weaker lanes. They do have some disadvantages. But... If they can pull it off, if they can make it happen, then by all means, they still might be able to win this game. Yeah, exactly right. If they're able to take that advantage and really start snowballing it, anything's possible, especially in high school esports where these players, you know, as much as it's a 5v5 environment, they're still learning a little bit and they're not exactly doing, uh, you know, what they're still, they're still learning the game, right? They're not 100% competent. They're not uh, all over it. And they can definitely, you know, look to maybe go for an extra kill or two where, you know, realistically higher level pro players would play a lot more controlled because they're just having fun with the game, right? They're still kids. They still enjoy playing the game. And, you know, as we all do, it's a game so to have fun as we see a five-man invite from the blue side straight away and looking to maybe get some cheese uh, versus their uh, opponents. Yeah, as you're saying, you know, looking to have some fun. And on that similar note, too, like, are we ever not still learning the game with how it's always adapting, with how it's always changing? I feel I'm always a student gone rogue, able to jump right onto Dinosec. Flash for Flash does mean the Trundle will escape for now. Dinosec, definitely not the start he was looking for. He wanted to go for some early duels. Well, it's going to be that much harder without Flash available. And now Niners and Nico actually staying around a little bit too long. Xenon, going to tumble forward. That's five points on your vein spotting card at the moment. But... It will not punish this Blaker <laughs> side as no one dies in our first minute and a half. Yeah, not yet going down in vein spotting. A very common thing to do uh, when you're playing in these uh, level of games. And the interesting trundle here, opting for the red buff start, means he'll be parking towards this bot side and looking to really help out the Nautilus, but will be spotted out by that early invade so they know exactly where it's starting. And both junglers starting on the top side, which is something is very, very unusual for, uh, you know, uh, maybe not pro players to kind of understand that parking towards the lane you want to influence is the way to go. And Good to see both these jungles adapting and knowing that this Maokai Camille game is going to be a little bit of a dead rubber. Maokai obviously quite a strong wheat side top player and Camille able to generate leads by herself. So you can see her doing uh, these heavy trades this early on into the game. Uh, and this bot lane here is going to be that main area of difference with both very aggressive supports and AD carries that rely on getting a couple of kills early on. Yeah, absolutely. The jungle tracking is going to be so critical as well for carry on again, who is going to do its best to probably avoid any duels with Dinosec, at least until level six. So by keeping track of where Dinosec is moving, he should be able to get those safer paths and maybe influence the map in that regards. However, Dinosec actually has gone for a bit interesting of a path himself by skipping over the Raptors. I'm curious if Carrion is going to be able to sort of adapt for that with the roots, roots he does take. Um, if he hasn't done that right now, actually, he might not realize how close Trundle is to the bot lane. So it does make that bot side gank a little bit riskier at the moment. As you can see right now, Lord is actually going to walk straight into Carrion and a bit of dragon and flagging and... Big hooks taking him into the wall so he'll be able to escape. Instead, Dinosec's focus was more on the mid lane. You see, he's a little bit pushed up here, and that parallel can just come down. Stun won't land though, and so nothing will come of that gank and trundles. You might be running into J4 here, but not the case. Slug Dog pinging some help in the mid lane as you do when you're a little bit behind, and you see a massive wave being built up here in the top side by Camille. And what a CS lead she has established for herself already. Yeah, absolutely. Again, though, Niners and Nico, there's not much he can do early just because every trade will be going Don Rude's way. And now he just has to farm under his tower and stay as safe as possible. But that health bar is getting quite low. And we actually might see that tower dive. Meanwhile, mid lane as well. Zian actually getting abused by Slog Dog as he's also going to be taking that wave straight into the tower. And this is the benefit of good jungle tracking as well. Both of them feel safe. Yellow card gets the sun and that will be first blood. Slog Dog does have flash available, but it's not needed. He's just going to strike away safely. And playing that high noon Twisted Fate, the classic Dopa skin, uh, obviously a very high level player in that mid lane there and able to demonstrate that pure skill and a uh, big difference there getting an early kill on this Echo. Who, obviously the melee champion into the range matchup, as much as you say it's a counter matchup uh, into the TF, oh. does need to be able to be a little bit stronger as we see the teleport coming back in. A little bit of danger for Slugbot, but he'll just keep fighting that one out. 
Yeah, Gone Rogue, meanwhile, is looking to pick up a kill for himself. Not quite going to get those last ticks of health down against Niners and Nico. But all three lanes starting to really shove against Parramatta at this stage of the game. Not the start they were looking for. And here comes the tower dive. A premature flash will be the demise of Niners and Nico. Yeah, going instantly down there, and you see this gap in uh, ranks once again. The top laner there, Malkai, falling to the Camille uh, as a big lead, a CS lead already as well. And, you know, being behind means that he'll be able to get that big difference. Yeah, as, um, again, apologies. I was a little bit off sync before, but I do believe things are right now. I, I can't see the, the future. I just, you know. Okay, I can see into the future. I'm making that all up. Five minutes and five seconds into this game. Dredge line not quite going to connect onto Xenon at this stage. As Smite, yo, AGS looking perhaps for some counter play as we hit five minutes and 15 seconds. Action slowing down a little bit in this one. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's one of those games in the early game with both these combos reaching a little bit of a lull state. Both these sides looking to play a little bit safe and just get this gold up, reach the items they want to reach because, you know, both sides have quite, uh, you know, scaling oriented champions on them. Obviously, Sisted Fate wants to get his Roa up and started already. Uh, Vayne, of course, famously one of the best scaling champions in the game. Really relies on getting those items up and available for her to really do impact on oh, the game. Oh, that's a good Zenith play connecting onto the back line of Large Zynga Box at the same time, too. You have the Hextex only made him holding Niners and Nico in place. And Kyron is fighting Dinosec as well. Three fights, three skirmishes, and only one kill going over to the side of Blakers. Yeah, I mean, just such aggressive play from both sides here. Able to just do so well in this matchup. Getting the flash and summoner spells out, or the heal, sorry, out of the Zyre there means the bot lane is going to be a, you know, a much more of a acceptable role. And the fact that they were able to make two plays across both sides of the map and not get punished or outnumbered means they're just playing so well in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately for Blakehurst, they didn't find that kill in the bot lane where it did look good at one stage. The action, though, was more focused on the top side, and we're starting to see that lead get established. A 4-1 gone rogue. It was the lead we were expecting to see uh, for sure. Has over double the CS against Niners and Nico, and with the kill as well. It's going to be tough times for the kitty disguised as a tree. That's right. I'm playing reverse today <laughs> right now. Uh I'm worried that we are starting to see almost the beginning of the end if these trends start to continue right now for Parramatta. You have to establish some semblance of lane play in order to have any control of the map. And if their lanes continue to get pushed back and continue to establish no pressure, then this entire jungle is going to belong to Carrion. And Blakers, they're just going to run this game completely over. I mean, there's already a thousand gold lead in both these solo lanes, so it's kind of reminiscent of that IG skin that Camille is brandishing at the moment of the uh, famous 2018 World's Victory, where it was just pure solo lane dominance from both these sides. And you see, again, this Malkai just getting traded into, which so much damage to Malkai. And Slog Dog is here. He has the stun, and not even the use of Nature's Grasp is going to be saving Niners and Nico in this one. Another kill going over to Slog Dog. A hat trick of kills within the first 10 minutes as he is. Hitting three and zero. A hat trick of a bit of a Rocket League casting term coming into here, which will be coming to you on Thursdays right here on Metal High School Esports. <laughs> Down in the bot lane, uh, another aggressive trade in Slogog. 3 0 means he'll be getting that roll up very early on, which means he'll be fully stacked up, uh, you know, prior to the 20 minute mark, which is uh, quite an extremely early one of the ages, if I do say so myself, and something that a TF mains love to see. Yeah, and again, the other thing that I'm loving from Slog Dog as well is what we discussed during the picks and bans, and just the Twisted Fate's ability to roam around the map and just apply pressure everywhere he goes. Now, in about 10 more seconds, he will have Destiny available yet again, and I expected to use it to pretty much get himself yet another kill. With that, he'll have his Roa finish, and then things are just going to go from bad to worse. That sense, the end, looking to fight back, won't connect with Parallel Convergence. Even if he did, that would have gone poorly for him as Carrion was just waiting just on the wings to get into that fight. Hey, Jalvin was just there. Blue buff now should get handed over to the mid laner. Um, as it is every jungle's responsibility to give the second blue and every blue thereafter to their mid laner. <laughs> and no matter what region you play in, I think it's a compulsory element of playing the jungle role. Well, you know, someone's bitter. I didn't give you the blue buff, but you were playing Zed and you didn't need it. <laughs> Anyways, more pressure being put from this bot line of the Blake Hurst side. 
Um, again, they've just been content to just throw those minions at them, and because they have those deep wards, they are aware, okay, if any movement gets played on them, we'll just walk away, take a look at the mini map. It's exactly what's happening. Dinosec, as well as Zien, start moving towards the bot lane, but because of the wardage, they're just able to back out safely, and that also means additional pressure is going to be put on the top half of the map. The jungler has been spotted, and if I am Niners and Nico, I am scared right now. Yeah, I mean, this Malkai 0337 CS at 10 minutes is a horror story, almost looking towards a flame horizon if you're a uh, gamer here, but ooh, and it can engage on the bot side. Yeah, but Large Zingerbox started autoing backwards. The Featherstorm comes out very early and does not dodge the Zenith Blade. Flash forward for Zingerbox, nearly takes out Xenon, but Xenon's able to kite and turn the kill right back around to Lord Labib. Zingerbox providing them spicy plays, but not spicy enough as the support goes down there in the one. And the 2v2, sorry, one kill onto this vein straight away. Not what you want to see when you're playing that, uh, you know, champion that gets outscaled. You know what the problem was? The wrong AD carry flashed forward. Large Zinger box flashed forward, but that's supposed to be Xenon's job. If he was playing Vayne, maybe it would have worked. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, again, a bit more duelage, but here comes the card of Destiny. It's yellow, it's a stun, and it's a lot of damage going down to Niners and Nico, who will have to walk away because here comes that dive. Gone Rogue's actually going to flash forward, drops the Hextech ultimatum, and that should be able to chop this tree down. Gone Rogue's picks up his second of the game. Yeah, the uh, Rift Herald as well drop means that first how will be going down at 10 minutes, which is quite strong. An Echo in the mid lane could be caught out here. Yeah, Echo could be in a bit of trouble as Slog Dog has already made his way back to this mid lane. Zian trying to do what he can, has to flash, but the follow up flash into the gold card is there. A lot of damage, but not enough for the kill. Slog Dog going under the tower, but then auto said tower and will not be able to secure the kill. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think he had enough damage, but a uh, miscalculated from Slog Dog. They didn't have the third row stack, maybe, that he was thinking about having. Uh, and unfortunately, the Echo gets to slip from his grasp. Almost completed that Protect Step Proto, but. Proto, uh, proto belt uh, as it will come in now and so oh, cataclysm oh. gone rogue is here but the teleports coming through zian's going to try and save his green friend and they actually get the kill on the carrion nikos will go down but now slog dog has arrived a little too late he did use teleport to get in there but dinosec is the one who might be getting caught off card the gold card into the damage from gone rogues will be a double kill for this camille and it's a two for one I mean, this Camille's just so fed, coupled with this TF constantly running up on the top lane. It's just kind of like, it, already at 11 minutes, a uh, 5,000 gold lead, 6,000 gold lead, sorry, uh, for uh, Blakehurst High School, and it's, uh, for Parramatta, it's about all those things where it's all about damage mitigation now and trying to somehow find some semblance back into this game, looking for a shutdown on either Camille or the Twisted Fate. Oh, the Camille, under the tower we go, and the large Zinger box actually is going to get one kill back before getting caught by the Solar Flare. The tower turns it into a double kill, and that might be the momentum that Parramatta needs. Yeah, I mean, this Zaya looks like it's going to be their only shining light when it comes to these team fights, and unless she can get a shutdown, uh, is it the Camille or the, uh, ooh. Yeah, that's actually a lot of abilities being thrown in mid lane. That sends Zien out of mana, has to run away. The gold card's there, but so is Gon Roos, who comes screaming through with the hook shot. Kill secured by Slog Dog, and now Dinosec is in the middle of No Man's Land. A fail flash into the wall will be the end of the troll. A double kill going to Slog Dog, as all Niners and Nico can do is throw some cats and say, Hi, I'm here too. I mean, it's not, uh, un, uh, sorry, it's, the result of this game Whoa. is probably not going to be what we didn't expect. We see all the support was Slog Dog's in trouble, board. actually. The gold card didn't really do much as the Twisted Advance held him in place. Niners and Nico doesn't secure that kill, however. This Camille's just taking away red buff. Just, as you do casually at 12 minutes into the game, just take over the entire enemy's jungle as the top laner. You know, to continue, I mean, Camille's not really a jungler anymore, but obviously he likes being back in that role. And looks like the red team might be trying to take her down here, but I just, I'm pretty sure she should be able to 1v3. Yeah, this is a very risky play, actually. Niners and Nico are going to try and hold Gon Rose in place. Here comes the parallel convergence, but Gon Rose sees it and actually runs more towards that top lane, looking to space themselves between them and the three members now of Parramatta. That said, Hextech Ultimatum is going to be thrown down into the middle of it because Slog Dog has arrived, and they're going to turn around and get one kill back. Poor, poor Dinosec tries to charge to get to Gon Rose, but will die giving a double kill to the Camille. Slog Dog wants a kill for himself, though. He's still trying to push the NLI. Meanwhile, Solar Flare catches Lord of Bib. Smite Yo Ags is able to hold him in place, and that's enough for Xenon to help get that kill. That actually goes over to Smite. Kerrigan dives, kills Xenon. Back in the bot lane, Xenon gets a double kill. It's a 4 4 0, both in the top and the bot lane. That was an unofficial. Oh, we guess it wasn't an ace because the trundle respawned, but. All yep. five members went down at 14 minutes into the game, and 
I mean, it's one of those games, 10,000 gold before 20 minutes. We thought last game was a big advantage, and that went to 35. I don't think this game will be lasting that long. And uh, yeah. as the yeah, the what, the defending champion, or not defending champions, but the runners oh up my from last gosh. game. Meta, Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> <What do you laughs> do? Like, <laughs> That's a Maokite! That's the tankiest champion in the game! And he is just completely cut down. Also, I want to make an amendment. I said four for zero in that last fight. It was actually six for zero because Niners and Nikos died, teleported back in, and died again. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Jeez, it's just... Uh, it's one of those games where, as a couple of casts, there's not much I can say past, like, they just hard won lane kingdom. And uh, although they're getting up the second dragon now, maybe working towards that soul, I don't think they'll have time to even take it. Because the TF just demolishing this. Uh, oh, where dang. is the magic resist? It's just not there, and Blakehurst, they can do whatever they want right now. They want to put down a troll, they'll put down the troll. They want to dive Lord of Bib. Well, Lord of Bib's got to be pretty careful, because they might dive him just like that. Xenon goes in, forces the big Nautilus to go golden, but that's only going to buy so much time. Flag and Drag does secure the kill. The tower should be able to get it back, and Lord Ziggerbox is actually on the back end. It's a double kill for the Zaya, who, again, is that one shining light for Paramount. Yeah, Zaya 4 2 0. You see Echo here under the tower. Uh, I'm not going to be doing much in this game. Just, yeah, no. You cannot so. run. You cannot. Oh my gosh! Ooh. You can run, and as it turns out, you can run. I don't know can if you, you can hide, hide but. Oh. Uh, the Hextech ultimatum. Either. Either way. Look at yeah, that. the Hextech ultimatum are actually backfiring. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those weird glitches where you get stuck in the wall and uh, you can't do much other than that, but wow. What a. <laughs> what a, what a uh, interesting uh, turn of events up on that top side. A small shining light there for the Echo being able to get away and get some damage down on that tower. But again, Camille so strong. A uh, bit of BM in the all chat, but that's all right. I uh, mm. love that in high school games. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it is what it is. Either way, though, we're focusing on the gameplay itself as Dinosec trying to fight back into this one. Going to go ahead and clear that vision. Gone Rogue, also continuing to put more pressure on the top side at the moment. And again, I feel like we're just sort of buying time until we start to see those big final fights and big final pushes for this game to end. 22 stacks on Slog Dog's Magi Soul Stealer. And now he is going to have that one shot potential that he was just short of before. And if anyone gets hit by one of those golden cards, they are done. I mean, I like to see how much damage a blue card does, obviously, with the buff, that, or the, the buff ratio, sorry, that it does. Uh, so much more damage with the AP ratio now, and we'll see uh, Vayne once again under this tower, trying to poke down the Echo, but again, just so much power for map from the blue side, and it's just a matter of time until in this game. I think they're really just waiting on this Baron Nash to spawn, and once that's up, it's, it's kind of uh, going to be spelt the end of the game for the red side. Is TF popping that ultimate, but oh, oh. looks like they're diving in Malkai once again. It's the gold card of destiny, but it's not going to be used as it said he tries to afford nature. Scratch large Zinger box actually able to get on the slog dog. That's a lot of damage, and the twisted fate goes down. Gone Roach, the next target in the midst. The Hextech ultimatum is able to buy some time, does not get caught by the Featherstorm. Zian is there holding him in place, yet Gone Roach again uses that hook shot to escape. Kyrian, the next target right now. Dredgeline not able to hit him, and he will be able to walk away. A timely pick cuts those stacks in half, and now slog dog is back at 12. That's huge for Paramata 1. Yeah, of course, shutting down that Magi's, but also getting the massive shutdown on Slog Dog Tag, especially going over to the Echo, which is going to be the champion that needs to match these two fed carries in the side lane. Is going to be, uh, you know, probably not the, the way back into the game, but at least a start to getting towards maybe reeling this back for uh, Paramata High School. And uh, Bath Bathurst, <laughs> Blakehurst, uh, obviously, still quite commanding in their 10,000 gold lead, but it hasn't grown any more in the last five minutes or so. So. Uh, something to say uh, to Parramatta, able to kind of stabilize the, the deficit they're at a little bit and can maybe start now to kind of try wheeling that back in. Yeah, that could be the case. However, the invade is on for Blake Curse as everyone is just running into that bot side jungle. There's the death push, and oh no, Kitty Tree could be in a lot of strife, especially with Carrion coming in. Flag and Drag does not connect, but the autos are even doing work for Slog Dog. Gold card again, going to hold him in place, and nothing Lord Labib can do to really jump in and turn this around. They have to wait for Xian, who does not connect with the parallel conversion. So, a back to a standstill at this mid tower. However, Blake Curse playing as if they control this entire map. Yeah, I mean, Blakehurst do just control the entire map. Uh, waiting for that next Infernal Dragon, oh, sorry, next Ocean Dragon, of course, probably the best soul. Two games in a row we get that Ocean Soul. Uh, will be coming up in about 50 seconds uh, on the blue side. And 
you know, it's very difficult to see either side coming out. Oh, sorry, the red side coming out on top of this game, but they're still fighting, they're still staying alive in these fights, and I think that's one of the first fights they've taken in which no one's gone down. Yeah, but they're not really out of danger remotely yet. We take a look at that 10k gold differential as we approach that 20 minute mark at 19 minutes, 22 seconds. Usually if there's a 10k difference before that mark, I, I know some people like to call it the mercy rule. I prefer if it's called the no mercy rule, where if you're down by that much at 20 minutes, the game just ends and you lose. I'm pushing for this, so hashtag no mercy rule out there. Let's end these games at 20. Uh, I digress, however, because that leads to actually getting worse as we continue right now. And Parramatta, I think it's going to come down to some like either really creative plays around Baron and or Dragons, or maybe Blakehurst just picking the absolute worst fight you have ever seen in order for them to come back into this. So maybe Zaya just becomes double lift in 1v9s. The large Zinger Ooh. box, it's in the name. It's, it's got potential sure. to be oh. the greatest player in the form. You see Echo trying to fight this Camille. Yeah, I don't think he, uh, Gone Rogue was expecting that Echo to be there, but that's okay. Hextech Ultimatum catches three, and Gone Rogue should be able to walk away, but he actually gets stuck with some auto pathing. didn't know which way to go, and the dredge line will pull Gone Rogue back to their doom. That's a huge shutdown, actually, going over to the large Zinger box, who 5 2 and 1 is looking pretty strong, but as these picks happen, towers do fall. Mid tower's gonna go down. Rift Herald dropped on the Bot side. That bot tower should go down, and this game continuing to snowball against the likes of Parramatta. Yeah, precisely. Blake is still doing work across the map despite losing you know, some of their fed members and giving over large shutdowns, but uh, getting this rift carried onto an inhibitor tower. Oh! Oh! Ooh, Dredge line connects on the Zenon, but the flag and drag to turn this fight right back around. Karen gets the first kill on the Nautilus, but large Zinger box is the one they need to be careful of. Sitting on that flank is getting a lot of autos in. Flashes forward, doesn't need the root, still is able to get the kill back on the carry on and smite your ags. Will be the next to fall. Zian just whacking away, does get the kill himself. Gold card though, here comes Slogdog, throws it down onto the Echo, but does not have that one shot potential. From behind, it's Gone Rogue, and immediately deletes the large Zinger box. That's the damage gone, a double kill for Gone Rogue, and yes, Zian will go golden, but it's not going to be enough to save him, even with the parallel convergence. The best he can do is get a kill back onto Xenon, but at the end of it, it is an ace for three. These two Fed members still standing strong for the side of Blake Curse, and they uh, will take down these inhibitor towers. No inhibitors. Oh, I mean, actually, probably they could, actually. It's only uh, Lord Zabib and uh, Dinas and Nico that are able to uh, stay alive here, but overall, so much, so many minions pushing into this space. Just the individual leads for these players, Nino and Nico, the Maokai, is what? Five or six thousand gold. I mean, look at it. You can see it right here. Hextech Ultimatum just dropped right there to cut the tree down. Dredge Line does not connect on the Gun Rogue. It said hits the tower. And yeah, there's just. Camille's too hard. I mean, you, you're thinking this Camille's playing like Lumberjack Sion or something, just cutting down that tree <laughs> over and over. Do you reckon? Surely uh, Lumberjack Sion gets a buff versus Maokai. Yeah, but this, is, this like, isn't. This is a cat, though. It's not a tree, so really, this oh, is disgruntled right, vet Camille. Disgruntled <laughs> vet Camille, <laughs> just jabbing that tree over and over again. With yeah, exactly, shots. with those sharp needles. As <laughs> Zian's actually in a bit of trouble, probably because that was the uh, pet owner who has not been treating their tree correctly. A bit of action down below, though. Looks like they might. Your eggs got caught. Cataclysm is able to get Zingerbox. Zian is able to get out, but Zingerbox is the target. However, Don Rogue can't get in and throws himself in a bad situation. A double kill and a shutdown to large Zingerbox. And this Zaya is coming back alive and is getting more and more active in this game. I mean, it is that one shining light they still have available. Eight kills on the Zion now. It's quite a formidable amount of gold. Um, you know, matching the amount of kills there on the Tis to Fate. Obviously, not the same amount of gold because the uh, CS lead isn't there. Well, I mean, CS is about the same, but these assists are not coming through. Uh, but regardless, these shutdowns that the Zion could be grabbing mean she's, you know, around the 11k mark. So she's bang on with the gold yep. of this Camille and the uh, Twisted Fate. So it could become a little bit of the protect the carry combat. If large Zinger blocks can stay alive in these fights and do DPS, I I'd value a fed over carry, a fed 80 carry mm -hmm. over a fed TF or Camille any day. And as we approach the 23 minute and 30 second mark, Maokai has finally finished his first item. So he's going to be getting more and more relevant as this game <laughs> progresses. The Sunfire Cape needed for split pushing pressure. Not even, Probably not, not what I would have prioritized, but yeah, he, he gets it done. I would have gone Thorn Mouse and I would have gone um, Ninja Tableau because the auto attack damage to the Camille is excessive, right? Tier Twisted Fate, although he's super fed and is going to be doing a lot of damage, uh, you know, Twisted Fate does actually doesn't do that much damage per se. He's not you know, one of the big damage dealing uh, mid laners that you could have. Maybe something more like Camille or Rise could be doing that DPS, but he's still um, a formidable amount. Slogdog's counting caught. He's actually probably going to go down right here. The red card is not going to save him. 
goes golden, but that's only going to buy time. Maybe get a kill back. Actually, Zian goes ahead and uses his own ultimate gold card again, thrown onto this Echo. Slog Dog stayed alive for so long that the rest of Blade Curse have decided to start Baron. Yeah, I mean, with the Rage Blade on this main, getting those Blade of the Room Kings stacked up extra, because we will be able to take down the Baron uh, fast oh. as possible, but... 2v1, protect large Zinger box. Hextech Ultimatum does hold the Zinger box in place, but good positioning from Lord Labib will keep the Zaya alive. However, as this happens, Baron will go down, and that might be the catalyst needed for Blake Hurst to run away with this game. Yeah, but it's not on this for pushing at TF, which is a big deficit. Obviously, what doesn't need it does has that still same pressure from the uh, amount of abilities they have up. And looks like they'll also grab the Ocean Soul, which will uh, spell the end of the game here, I believe, for the red side. Unless they can contest, right? They still have all five members available. Stingerbox going for a reset with a bit of gold in his pocket. Can maybe spend it, get another item. Probably finish off that Infinity Edge as he does it now. And uh, could potentially be the game-ending fight here for either side, not game ending, but at least game ending if the blue side do come out on top. Yeah, if Lakers take this next fight, it's going to be disaster really for Paramata, who to their credit has done a good job to stay in this one right now. It's been very hard to push against this team and they've been getting timely picks time and time again on key targets. It does feel like Blakehurst aren't really willing to commit to the all-in unless they have both Slog Dogs and Gone Rogue available. So. Let's see how they play with Baron right now. A bit of sieging happening down in that bot lane below. And really the first time we've almost seen this blue side group as five. That will attract a lot of attention from Paramat. And if they go in on this, they're going to have to make sure the execution on the engage is perfect. In the mid lane, though, Slog Dog has drawn the attention of both Zian and Dinosec. And that does mean Paramat is a bit off balance. And as soon as the floodgates open for this blue side, they might look to run it all the way to that Nexus. You see it, maybe a potential dive coming in here Ooh. under the tower. Yeah, yeah. Parallel Convergence. Yeah. So neither team's going to go for it. And the one thing that had that sort of that siege, they had no minions though, and you do have your solo TF here without Baron Buff applying a pressure in the other lane. There. I think they really need to split up into a 1 3 1. Have the Camille and TF in the sides, your other three med squad in the middle, and that's how you're going to apply the most amount of pressure in this game the quickest way possible. Opting for this 4 1 split, that means they might be susceptible uh, to a uh, Look at the flank. Okay. Look at the flank. Oh no, the flank was spotted by Gone Rogues. Actually, he'll jump onto Niners and Nico. Fortunately, the cat does have that Sunfire Cape, so he's going to be able to bat away the angry vet and walk out of this one. Thought that was going to be the fight. Instead, it's just going to be more pressure put down, really, for this Blakehurst side, waiting for the misstep out of Paramata, and then looking to punish off at of the back of that. I mean, this is just, it's actually surprisingly uh, slow here. The first tower does go down, but the siege with the Baron minions just slowly poking away at oh. the tower. Gone Rogue gets jumped on the counter engage. Xenon actually going after large Zinger box and over the wall we go. Carry on. He may have been off of way too much that he could do. Drop the Cataclysm, but it only hits the tanks in it. That said, Maokai is able to find that kill eventually on Carry on. But Lord of Bib does go down and the back line has been jumped upon. Large Zinger box falls. A double kill for Xenon. And that should do it for this one as Blakehurst looks to comfortably Ooh. take this game. What a amount of damage coming out of that second year from Camille. Triple kill onto the vein and that should be the end of the game there. A dominating performance by Gone Rogue and Slog Dog in this game and what a quick win by Blaker. Yes, they're gonna go ahead and probably let the minions finish this one off and even some flashes being blown right there as eventually the Nexus will fall down. Victory for Blakehurst. They made it to the finals last year, and their journey to return continues with yet another victory for this blue side. Yeah, that was so impressive. 16,000 gold at the end of that game at being the lead. Camille so fed in that game. And, I mean, I'd have to say that Gone Rogue is probably the MVP. Yeah, Gone Rogue on that Camille. We knew the matchup was going to be a struggle for Niners and Nico, but I don't think anyone could have imagined it going that poorly for them. Again, Slog Dog as well did a great job in roaming up, setting up some of those dives, and just keeping any chance of Niners and Nico to fight back uh, into this game at as low a percentage as possible. First completed item, 23 and a half minutes in. That's not a good time. And unfortunately, Niners and Nico, he really didn't get too much help. Um, from the rest of the team either as the other lanes were also struggling and the Paramount side was unable to get any momentum going for them back on the opposite side of the map despite how well Large Zingo Box was playing at times. Yeah, I mean, Large Zingo Box is actually, you know, a, quite a shining light for Paramount High School and obviously a little bit of a tough matchup today coming up against uh, probably the strongest uh, school obviously in New South Wales and uh, the second best school in all of Australia. 
Australia and New Zealand, um, the best school in Australia, uh, oh. if you look at last year's results. So, I mean, still promising signs from them. Obviously, they weren't expected to win today. And I think they still had quite a decent standing. They pushed them to a 27-minute victory, which given the fact, if you looked at the game set at about 10 minutes, you think, oh, this game's going to be over in the next five or so. But they managed to stay in this game, stick it out a little bit longer, and uh, they're just able to, you know, really push this team to their limits. and Or maybe not to their limits, but push this team a little bit further than they usually are expected. And I think when they're playing against other teams that aren't, you know, these these top-tier teams with challenger players in them, I think Large Zinger Box has been an outstanding performance. And I think overall Paramount have a lot of potential to do well outside of, uh, you know, mm-hmm. these type of matchups. Again, like their team fighting was actually incredibly strong. I particularly liked how Lord Labib was able to protect Large Zinger Box, um, even by like interfering with hitboxes at times. So they knew what their win condition was. They knew how to play around it. Unfortunately, that early game was just such a disaster for the Paramount side. They never found a way to really and truly climb their way back in it. Again, hashtag no mercy rule. No mercy was shown by uh, Westbrook as they go ahead and take the victory in under 30 minutes. Yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in to the Meta High School Esports broadcast. It's been week three Meta all wrapped up from us here. Unfortunately, League will be going down in about 45 minutes, so we can't uh, jump on and play some games tonight. But regardless, everyone, I mean, been fantastic games from both the two games today. One was a little bit of a longer game than this game, a much quicker game, much more demonstrating game of strength. But uh, overall, it's been very good games uh, from all schools today. And just fantastic to see schools getting involved in the grassroots e- esports system. So from all of us here on the broadcast side of Meta High School Esports, we thank you guys for tuning in today. And hopefully you'll see us on uh, Thursday for our Rocket League broadcast, or if not, League of Legends, back here at about 5 p.m. next Tuesday. <laughs>